Father, we thank you for what you are working out in our lives, in our nations. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. Thank you for what you are Thank you, Lord, for what you're working out. We celebrate you and we honor you. Thank you once again in Jesus' name. And let the people of God say amen. All right, once again, I welcome everyone. This is a special week in God's program for you, for me, for this platform, and for our families, our cities, and our nation. You will agree with me that every single week is unique in its character, in its content. There are so much that will happen in this week across the nations. People are preparing for this and for that, individual by individual, family by family, ministry, offices, nations, government, many plans are in the making. The witches and wizards are planning their own scheme and their agenda and their programs. And the churches are planning. God's army is planning. And we thank God that we are not left out in the program of this week. It's like, you know, who we win this week, who we buy over this week, who will take possession of this week, who we reign over this week. But we thank God because our winning is not under contention. For we know that in Christ, we have conquered. We are more than conquerors. We know that in Christ, we have one option. And that is to rule and to reign. And ruling and reigning is by exercising our kingly and our priestly ministry. And that is what we are here for, to exercise they, you know, insert the key that will make us reign. And that is the key of intercession, the key of prophesying, the key of, you know, um, calling upon the name of the Lord to move his hands. When the saints fail to pray, the nations decay. When the saints fail to pray, the harvest rotten's. But when the saints awake to pray, the harvest is gathered home and the hand of God is moved. The mountains are level, the valleys are filled, the crooked ways are made straight. When the saints pray, the woman delivers, pushes forth the man child that is being awaited, which the dragon is said to devour. The dragon is defeated and his purposes are frustrated. So once again, I want to welcome you to a week of your exploit with your God, a week of greater impact, a week to exercise the gift of God in your life by the grace of God in you as never before. Now, by the grace and mercy of God, I want us to look into a scripture, the book of First Thessalonians chapter five. I want to read from verse 16. It says, verse 16, Thank you, Father. He said, rejoice evermore. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit. Quench not the spirit, quench not the spirit, despise not prophesying, despise not prophesying. Wow. Father, we give you thanks. We give you thanks. Each of those verses is a whole topic, is a whole team, is a whole conference team. I want us to use today, you know, um, can the media team please project the globe before us? Every day, every week, every month, Christians are crying unto the Lord over the issues of the nation. Some people are murmuring, some people are complaining, some people are you know, asking all manner of questions. But I've, I, there is a stirring in my spirit 
since last weekend that we should engage from time to time, engage into giving, I mean, appreciating, appreciating what is happening in the different nations. Engage the weapon of appreciation. Engage the key, the key of, of gratitude, gratitude, appreciating what God is doing. Now, today, we shall enter into the warfare of this week with appreciation for what God has been doing over this massive continent you are seeing. This massive continent that contains about seven, close to eight billion people seated in that globe, operating in that globe, working in that globe, schooling in that globe, serving in that globe, laboring in that globe, preaching within that globe. We're going to give thanks to God. You know, there was a time, the total number of Christians, we are not up to a million. The total number of born again people, we are not up to a million. But I'm sure now, the number of missionaries within this globe, missionaries alone, I'm not talking about believers, I'm not talking about Christians, I mean missionaries, full-time missionaries, they are over two million people. They are over two million people, well over that, within this globe. And you can be sure that the number of people that are born of the spirit, tongue speaking, fire baptized people in this globe, I don't think they would be less than one billion. I don't think there will be less than 1 billion, all right? And it started with just 12 people. Um, it started with about 120, just about 120 people that had become an army, a massive army, a massive army that cannot be stopped. Unstoppable army, unstoppable army, so massive that are blasting in tongues, worshiping the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. So today we are going to show gratitude, show appreciation, thanking God, thanking him. Let me remind us, attitude of thanksgiving, attitude of appreciation, attitude of gratitude is needed in winning war is needed in winning spiritual warfare. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. If you start thinking and considering how to solve the problem of Africa, you will die before your time. If you start considering, how will we stop what is going on in North Africa? Even in your very country, how can we fix it? How do you begin to fix what is going on in, in, in the Middle East, in Afghanistan? How do you begin? From where do you start? What do you do? When you start looking at the magnitude, the enormity, the depth, the, 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 the wickedness of the wicked in this season, if you start looking at it, your heart will break. So we want to enter into this week by beholding this globe, looking at the globe and saying, Lord, we thank you, Haya. We thank you for what you are doing in this massive continent. This massive continent, we want to thank you. Like I was saying, in the days of Paul the Apostle, the Christians born again all put together, certainly they were not up to, maybe not up to a million, for sure. They were not up to a million. If Paul the Apostle comes back, and look into the massive crowd of born again people in the world today. I'm sure those matters, those whose blood were shed for the salvation of the nations, when they see the massive crowd, teeming crowd of born again people in Africa, in Europe, forget it. I know that Europe, for instance, has gone down from what it used to be, but even at that, the works of God that are still going on. There are a number of people from Europe in this meeting now, all right? In different platforms, you see people from different nations. So 
let us not overlook the works of God going on in our continent. Like I said, we want to return appreciation. We want to have a positive feeling towards what is going on in our world. Have a positive feeling, a positive feeling. No matter how deadly things are going on in Nigeria and some other countries where there is some religious war and tribal war and all of that, yet there are good things God is doing. So I want us this morning to develop some positive feeling, some appreciation feeling, some feeling of gratitude, some feeling of love, we are thankful for the mighty works you are doing in our days, acknowledging the favor of God, acknowledging the kindness of God, you know, seeing that the devil is not the one ruling. The devil is not the one ruling. God is in control. God is at work. God is at work. So we are approaching God from that point of view. Somebody said, when you become thankful, you are getting ready to have the best of God. When you learn to thank God for his finger, all right, he will reveal his mighty arm. He will reveal his full force. You know that to be thankful is to apply for, 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 for more. To Thank God, to appreciate God is a way of applying for more of God, is a way of applying for more of his move. Lord, we want to enter this week with thanksgiving, with appreciation, with gratitude, with loads, and shower you today with thanks, with thanks for what you are doing in our globe. Many things are happening in North America that God is the one behind it not the Illuminati that is controlling everything going on. No, there are certain acts of God that we don't even know that God is behind this. Even in your own house, even in your own business, even in your own school, in your career, in your office, there are certain developments you may not even attribute it to God, but God is behind it without you knowing. Even in your own personal life, there are developments that God is the one behind it. He's architecturing what is going on without you knowing. Today, I feel it since this week, that weekend rather, that we need to, that God deserves our appreciation. God deserves gratitude from us. God deserves our thanks, our thanks, even today. As it touches what is going on in Australia, what is going on in Asia, what is going on in all the Middle East, what is going on in all of Europe, in all of Africa, South and North America. Even look at that massive globe we're seeing. You know, the light blue area is sea. That is the sea, all right? In that sea, you see. Do you know the thing that go on in the sea? You think God is only interested in what God happens within the, 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 the land? No, God is as, as, as present in the sea right to the bottom of the ocean. God is present in the mountains. God is visibly walking in the sea, in the mountains, in the moon, in the sun, in the star, as he is walking also in the land. So we want to say, Lord, we are applying for more of your move. One way of applying for the move of God is to thank him for what he is doing. When you thank God for what he's doing, when you appreciate what God is doing, you are applying for greater things, for greater things. And that is the wisdom we want to explore even this morning. All right. Now, I want you to look at that scripture we read again, the book of uh, um, first, first Thessalonians chapter 5. So please return the map, return the globe as I read it. It says, rejoice evermore. I want us to rejoice over this continent. We shall rejoice. We shall celebrate over the continents. We shall celebrate over the continent. Just celebrate what God is doing. Celebrate what the church is doing. Celebrate what the women are doing. Celebrate what the men are doing. Celebrate what the youths are doing. Celebrate what the teachers are doing in the schools. How, you know, sometime I, I, I was telling students yesterday, I said, listen, when you get to school, thank your teachers. 
that the parents are paying and the government is you know uh, is paying the, the teachers and the parents are paying school fee does not give you is is not is not is uh, is not a right okay is not your right is not your entitlement to come to school and uh, you don't appreciate them teachers are doing so much parents are doing so much husbands are doing so much wives are doing so much Everybody's busy doing one thing or the other. We need to be appreciative of one another. And I want to say it here. Let us use this week, use this season. In fact, from now to the end of the year, begin to show appreciation. Show appreciation to your family people, your wife, your husband, your children, your parents. Show appreciation to your pastors. Show appreciation to your, your employers. All right, and your employee show appreciation in words, in writing, in any way possible. Show appreciation. If it is given of gift, please do it. Do it, you know, in, intentionally. If it is words of appreciation, sometimes what people need from you is not prayer. What they need is some level of appreciation, some level of gratitude from you, making them realize that you value the little impute they are making in your life. It means a whole world to them. Begin at home, in your workplace, in your school. Are you a student? Appreciate your teachers. Are you a teacher? Appreciate your students. Are you a husband? Appreciate your wife. A wife, appreciate your husband. Children, appreciate your parents. Appreciate your pastors. Appreciate people who have re leadership role over your life. When the world is filled with appreciation and thanksgiving, it says, let the earth praise me. Let the people praise me. Let all the people praise me. Then shall the earth yield her increase. Then shall the earth yield her increase. And God, even our God, will bless us. So there is a blessing, there is an increase, there is a rising, there is a reviving that comes as a result of thankfulness, appreciation, and gratitude. So, are you ready? Let us rejoice. He said, rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. We are heading towards the end of the year when Christians go on holidays. And it bothers me a lot. Why should Christians go on holidays, holiday from intercession, holiday from prayer, holiday from fasting, holiday from preaching, holiday toward the end of the year, as if we are not aware that the end of the thing is what matters. How the year matters end rather is important to God and is important to Satan. The enemy has observed that Christians often go on holidays through toward the end of the year and toward the beginning of the year is a time of, you know, toward the end of the year, rather, is a, is a time for holidaying. So he capitalizes on that part of the year to secure the entry into the new year and to do, to rubbish what people have been able to do in the realm of the spirit from the beginning of the year toward that end of the year. Toward the end of the year, as they go sleeping, as they go sleeping, the enemy goes on rampage to damage and destroy, to corrupt and to confuse what the Christians have labeled to accomplish. Of course, it's in the scripture. The Bible said the man planted garden and went to sleep while he slept. While he slept, his enemy came and planted tars in the midst of the wheat. By the time he woke up, he saw tars all over the place, all over the place. Who did this? And you understood the enemy did this. The enemy did this. When did he do it? When men slept. When men slept. So we are charging ourselves that from now till the end of the year, we shall continue instant in prayer. Even if we are not meeting here, please continue in prayer. We, even if we suspend this meeting for a while, continue in prayer. Saturdays and Sunday, we don't meet here. It doesn't mean that you don't pray. Continue. To, even when our prayer is here is just for one hour. It doesn't mean that it's only one hour you pray. I hope it's not only one hour you pray. Please ensure that you stand in the gap. The Bible says pray without ceasing. It doesn't mean you pray every hour, every minute. No, but be in the mood of prayer. Be in the spirit of prayer. Whether you are cooking or playing or laughing or driving, be in the cloud, in the atmosphere of in the spirit of prayer. You are doing your work dutifully, yet you are in the realm of the spirit. You know, 
and be in that mode. That is a creative mode. It's a mood where you defend your world, you protect your world, knowing that you are not just watching over your life, you are not just watching over your family, you are watching over the globe. You are watching over the globe. This globe that we are looking at, I want to encourage you to buy one. Buy a globe. I have one. I bought one. All right, buy a globe. Buy a globe, look at it. Whenever I look at the globe, something happens inside of me. There is an eruption inside of me. When I look at the globe, I feel I feel indebted to the globe. I feel that I am the priest over the globe. I feel I am the pastor over this globe. I feel I have an assignment over the globe. I feel there is a blessing coming to me out of this globe. I have a responsibility to the globe, and the globe has a responsibility to me. The globe has an assignment to me and I have an assignment to the globe. That's how I feel. So it awakens the gift of God in me, the passion of God. If I feel weak, I feel tired, the moment my eyes sight this globe, something jacks up inside of me. So have it and let it be the stirring of the gift and the grace of God in your life. When you're preparing, prepare to be a light to the world. When you are studying the Bible, study the Bible as to preach to the people of the world. When you are living holy, live holy such that you will be found relevant and useful to make impact in the world because the enemy is at work to corrupt every believer so that God will not find anybody useful, useful in doing great things in the entire globe. Because the Bible says the, in a great heart there are vessels of honor and vessels of on, on, onto dishonor. If you keep your vessel pure, you will be a vessel meet for the master's use to accomplish great things. So keep yourself holy because of the globe. Keep your eyes open to see what is going on in the globe so that God will show you it is he that seek, find it. It is he that knock that the door will be opened unto. If you are seeking to know what is going on and how to improve Asia, how to improve the situation of things in Africa, in North America, in South America, in Australia, in Europe, if you are seeking, it is you God will show. If you are not interested in what is going on in Australia, in Europe, why will God bother to show you? It is he that seeks it, find it. That is why this prayer we are praying is opening doors both for you and for your children and children's children because some of the prayers you are praying will be answered through you and your descendants without you knowing. Some of the prayer we are praying will be answered through you, through your descendants without you having an idea. And the children wouldn't even know how it happened that they became the light of Asia. They became the salt of Africa. They became the pillar of North America. They became the voice of South America. They became the answer to Australia because of the investment of grandmama or the investment of their mom or their dad or their granddad. So having said that, I want you to remember the Bible says, quench not the spirit, quench not the spirit. Quench not the spirit. Quench not the spirit. There is something the Holy Ghost is doing in your life. Don't quench it. There is a new awakening. Please don't quench it. There is a new excitement. There is new grace that is rising out of you. Don't quench it. Don't quench it. You wake up in the night and you find yourself not being able to sleep. Don't lie there and be counting the ceiling and you'll be thinking of the bills and be thinking of what the other person said to you, how the person maltreated you, despised you. No, when you feel a staring in the spirit, you feel you are not able to sleep, jump out, whether lying on the bed or walk out of that bed sometime, I, I, I feel, I don't feel like staying in my house some night. I just open the door and go around the compound. Sometimes I just sit out there. Sometimes I'm walking around, looking into the sky. It makes so much impact in my life, talking to the heaven. Sometimes for a short time, sometimes a long time, then I walk in again. People are sleeping, but you are there keeping watch over the night because you watch men watch over the night. Watchmen watch in the night. While others are sleeping, the watchmen are watching. They are looking into the eyes of God to hear what he will say, to see what he will show. They are listening to the voice of God to hear what he would say, touching North America, touching Asia, touching Europe, touching Africa, touching Australia, touching the Middle, Middle East, to know what God would want to say. 
Having said that, finally, I want you to take note of this. He said, despise not prophesying. Prophesying. You see, when we come to this platform and we are prophesying, as we are going to do today, sometimes it's like, is this really important? Does it work? How will you be looking at Africa and you are prophesying that Africa is going to explode in the glory of God? Asia is going to manifest the fullness of God. North America is going to carry the mantle again. South America is going to be washed with the blood of Jesus. Australia is going to be set on fire for God. You keep saying it and you see that things are not working out. Governments are doing that. You know, the Illuminati is doing that. The, the different courts are rising and you are still talking. The Bible said, despite not prophesying, keep saying it, keep saying it, keep saying it, keep prophesying. We saw it in Genesis. That was how the world was created. God began to speak and God kept speaking. God kept speaking. And God saw what he said. He saw what he said. He saw what he said. So what you keep see, saying, you will see it. What you keep saying, you will see it. What you keep saying, you will see it. And that is the reason for this meeting, even today. So today we are going to say a lot of things in thanksgiving. For instance, Lord, I thank you because of the youth you are raising in Asia, because of the stars that are rising out of Africa. Lord, I thank you because of the women you are raising in South America. We are, thank we are thankful for the mighty leadership you are staring out of North America, the billionaires and the billionaires you are raising out of Australia and out of North America and Africa everywhere to champion to sponsor, to advance the kingdom of God. So we are going to thank God and worship him and appreciate him beginning from our own life. So we will begin with our own family, thanking God prophetically. I hope you understand what I mean by that. Prophetic thanksgiving. Lord, I thank you for what you are doing in my life, for what you are doing in the life of my children and my spouse and my family, my workplace, my colleagues, my employers, my employee, my students, everything around you. My pastor, thank you for what you are doing on the Global Harvest Prayer Network. We are thankful for what you are doing, what you are doing, what you have done. We are so thankful. From there, we get into the nations. So I want you to take about five minutes three minutes rather, to give thanks to God for our own life. And then three minutes after now, please, you begin to project for us the nations. Let's begin to take these nations. And as we go through the nations, thanking God for what he has done, what he is doing, like I said, Thanksgiving and gratitude and appreciation is a way of applying for more, is a way of invoking the spirit of greater move of God, invoking the spirit of God, invoking the ministry of the blood of Jesus, is a way of activating the forces of heaven to accelerate their activities over that territory that you are thanking God for, for what he has been doing. So don't ever neglect what God is doing. God is doing so much in this continent. I, my heart is challenged up, knowing that inside of this globe, God is busy. God is busy at work. Hallelujah. So shall we begin to give thanks to God for our lives? Thank God for your life. Do you really thank God for what is good, God is doing in your life? Sometimes you are, you are like, oh, I'm not like that pastor. I'm not like that other woman. God, why is my life like this? See the way I even talk. See the way I behave. Lord, I'm so bad. No, begin to thank God for what is going on in your life. The little you can do, thank God for it. Because without him, you wouldn't even do what you are doing now. So let's thank God from your life to your entire family. And then we get into the nations. Hallelujah. Mighty God, I thank you, Father. I thank Lord, you for I my life. We commune, commune, Oh, Father, I thank you, Lord. I thank you for some for my life. I thank you, Spirit of the Living God, for what you are doing in my life, Lord. I thank you, Father, for revealing yourself to me, Father, in the name of Jesus, to go to Amanda. I thank you, Spirit of the living God, for choosing me, Lord. Thank you, Father, for 
Thank you, Lord, for what you are doing in my life. Thank you for what you are doing with me now. Lord, I'm so grateful for what you are doing in my life. Oh, Jesus, I'm grateful for what you are doing in my life. Thank you for what you are doing in the life of my wife. Thank you for what you are doing in the life of my wife. Thank you, Lord, for what you are doing in the life of my children. Lord, I thank you. Thank you for what you are doing in the continent of we thank you for what you are doing in Nigeria. Hallelujah. For all your mighty works in God in the Russia. And we thank you for your mighty works in the Russia. And we thank you for what you are doing in Russia. What are you doing in South Africa? Now, where I live. Thank you for what you are doing in this city of Thank you for what you are doing in the name of Lazarus. Thank you for what you are doing in the name of Lazarus. What you are doing in the name of Lazarus. What you are doing in the name of Hallelujah. <laughs> 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 
Thank you for what is going on in Russia, what is going on in, in, in Turkey, what is going on in Shami. What is going on in the Dominica, 
Is a mute person? Unmute. All right. He said, Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. What we did is every number of us, as we traveled to each of those nations, we are more than 10. We are more than 30 in this meeting. Okay, so we are representing every one of us. We represented every nation, standing on behalf of every nation. When um, Abraham was appealing for the case of Sodom, it was like, if I find 10 people who will stand in the gap, righteously stand in the gap, I will save this land. We are much more than that. We are all together standing. We stood for every nation, every nation saying, Lord, we thank you. We thank you because your anger 
is being suspended over this nation. Your love and grace is being unleashed over this nation. He says, let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Then, then, then shall the earth yield her increase. And God, even our God, shall bless us. Say, God shall bless us. And all the ends of the earth shall fear him. All the ends of the earth shall fear him. God shall bless us. God shall bless us. And all the ends of the earth shall fear him. How? When we praise God for the works of his hands, we are applying for greater move of his spirit over the land. That is what we have done. This is one of the greatest wisdom you can use to fix any problem, any complication, any crisis, anywhere. Thanksgiving to God and to people. Thanksgiving to God and to people can do wonders. It can do wonders. It can do wonders. It looks like you can use thanksgiving to cause a gun, a, 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 a sword in somebody's hand to drop off. Somebody may be charging to attack you with thanksgiving. The person may not know when he or she will drop that sword or that gun, that weapon, that attack, that planned conspiracy can be frustrated through the weapon of thanksgiving. Listen, no matter what the enemy is doing across the nations, revival is surely coming. Revival is here, revival is here. And we shall see it with our eyes in dimensions that the prophets could not even prophesy about because the Bible says we know in part, we see in part, we prophesy in part. Much of what God is doing and is about to do, the prophets are not able to see it. We can't see all of God's plan, and that is why we are prophesying, thanking him excitedly, prophetically, confidently, because God is able to do exceeding abundantly above what we ask, above what we think, according to the faith that works in us. So it is our faith that inspires us to thank God in advance of what is happening and what is about to happen. So having said that, I want to ask one of us to raise our voice and give thanks to God before I raise my last prayer, okay? And then we will do the communion. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Can I ask, um, is uh, Sister Lizelle here? Is she still here? If you're here, can you just raise your voice and thank God briefly for what has happened? And after that, I will raise the last prayer we're going to do. And please, Pastor Levan, prepare to do the communion. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Is Sister Lizelle still here? Lizelle Morris? Thank you, mighty God. We give you praise. We magnify you. We hallow you. We honor you. Thank you, mighty God. We give you praise. Sorry, Pastor Lad. Um, okay. Yeah, good morning. Good thank morning. Thank Father, you, we thank you. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We thank you that you are a God who is... So your goodness we are in awe of you God we thank you for your mercy your grace your love we thank you that you are God and there is no one else thank you dear father for the revival outbreak over all our nations thank you for the opportunity to be gathered every morning oh father God to just lift up the nations, the continents to you, oh Father. We thank you. Thank you for this ministry. Thank you for Pastor Light. Thank you for a global great awakening all over the globe as you sensitize people all over, oh Father God, to hallow and worship your holy name in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for each and everyone coming on the call, oh Father God. Thank you that we can come together in corporate prayer, oh God, to lift up the nations to you, oh Father God. We just give you praise. Thank you for the session, oh Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you that you are a God who answers prayer. And we thank you, Father God, for your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. We give you all the praise. Thank you, Father God, for our lives, our families. Every 
every crooked path straight in the mighty thing that we do this week. Oh, Father God, may we always you, work from a position of excellence, honor mm. to you, oh, Father God, in everything mm. that we do, oh, Father. Help mm. us, oh, God, to present ourselves, our faculties, our bodies as members, oh, Father God, to be used by you in every sphere of society and influence in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Amen. dear Father, that you are mindful of us. Thank you that you have chosen us for such a time as this, to stand in the gap, oh, Father God, on behalf of the nations. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Amen, amen. Thank you so much, woman of God. The Lord bless you. All right, people of God, I want to take this last prayer. It is boiling inside of me. I see it in the book of Isaiah chapter 41, verse 15. Isaiah 41, verse 15. It says, thank you, Holy Spirit. Blessed be God. Where is it? Say, behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument. Wow. Having teeth, thou shalt thresh the mountains and beat them small. And, and shall make the hill as chaff, and make the hill as chaff. Can you show it to me in a different translation? Now, as that comes up, I want you to understand that the works of God, the program of God is time bound. He says, see, I will make you into a sharp threshing board, new with many teeth, with fresh mountains, Ah, this one, which other translation can you possibly give me? Now, but the point is this. I want to pass a message here. We are gradually coming to the end of the year. Now, there are mountains God has appointed that you will thresh down for him. He said, I will make you a sharp threshing instrument. A sharp threshing instrument. He said, I will make you, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument having teeth that thou shalt thresh, thresh the mountains, thresh the mountains and beat them small, beat them small. There are mountains God wants you to beat small. He wants you to level certain mountains. There are Goliaths God wants you to slay for him. There are mountains he wants you to level. There are things he wants you to demolish for him, for him, right? Therefore, I want us to pray, Lord, let it be that every mountain you have ordained that I will level for you this year. Oh my goodness. You will sharpen me the more. Sharpen me the more. Do you know you can, a mountain can take somebody 10 years to level. The same mountain can take another person five years, another one year, another one month, another one week to level down. So same mountain. It's not because of your stamina. It is the sharpness. It's like cutting down a tree. You can use a blunt axe and you will wound yourself because there's going to be blisters. You will stress yourself. Another person will take this very sharp uh, axe before long the wood is on the ground. I want us to pray, Lord, sharpen me the more. Make me a sharp threshing instrument that I will thresh down. I will level down mountains, cut down wood, cut down Goliath that are troubling you. Everything you've appointed me to do for you this year, I will not miss one. Not one shall escape. I will finish my assignment for the kingdom this year in my house, in my workplace, in my family, in my ministry, in any environment where I am, Lord, open my eyes to see the things appointed for me to do this year that I've not even known. I've known them, but I have no strength to face them. Sharpen me to finish the assignment meant for me. Shall we go ahead and pray? Mighty God, lay bam, do soto, prokoto, etc. We have two minutes for that prayer and then the communion. Mighty God, I call upon you that you do your wonders, oh God. Make me, O oh God, a sharp board, a sharp board, a sharp, board, a sharp, board, a sharp, a sharp instrument with knives that are sharp and new. I will train the mountains and destroy them with a sharp into dust. In the name of Jesus, a sharp instrument, a sharp threshing instrument, my God, Oh, yes, Lord, 
Jesus mighty name of Jesus hallelujah amen Jesus mighty name thank you Lord thank you hallelujah God's servant yes pastor Levan to do the communion go ahead man good morning yes, God. Uh, everyone good morning pastor light father we thank you as we get your emblems ready um let's just um so i'll just read one and... scripture in ephesians chapter 2 verse 13 you, but now at this very moment in christ mm. jesus you who once were very very far away from god have been brought near by the blood of christ hallelujah mm. As we Amen. take his body and his blood, let's just pronounce one minute. Let's pronounce that his blood is bringing redemption over these nations, over the continents of the world, that the Thank blood you. is cleansing, the blood is sanitizing, mm. the blood is sanctifying, Amen. the blood is bringing reconciliation. Let's pray for just a second and thank God thank you, for what Jesus. the blood thank of you, Jesus, Jesus is doing. is Hallelujah. bringing them closer Hallelujah. to him. Hallelujah. The blood Hallelujah. is drawing them Hallelujah. in other closer. Hallelujah. The blood Hallelujah. is drawing Hallelujah. those activity to be The blood is drawing the blood is drawing the blood the blood is drawing 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 the blood Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Shall we partake? Shall we shall we all just partake? Hallelujah. Amen. Over to you, Pastor Light. To God be the glory. Thank you so much, Pastor Le Levan, for the communion. Servants of God, I want to congratulate every one of you. This is a heavily loaded week. You see the way we entered. There are so much God wants to accomplish this week. Using you as a person, using your whole family, using your ministry, using your business. Great things are about to happen all to the glory of him who sits enthroned in the heaven. Now, please, I want to say this. There is somebody who has been coming to the platform for some time now using Galaxy S9. Please, we've been admitting, the, the, the admin team have been admitting you graciously. The law or the rule on this platform is that you come in with your name so that we know who is who, please. You know, for obvious reason, we need to know who is with us so that we don't, we don't take it for granted that everybody here is a Christian. Some people can sneak into a, a Zoom meeting and you don't know who they are. So please, it is in good faith that we request that you come in with your name so that we know who you are. 
All right, thank you so much for that understanding. The person on Galaxy um, S9, please don't forget it. When you are coming in tomorrow, come in with your name. Thank you so much, we appreciate you. And um, anybody who is here who is not in our, our, our contact list, please give us your name and your number so that we can put your name and your number in our contact um, list and keep in regular touch with you. All right, we're going to draw the curtain here. It's been an awesome loaded day. I want to congratulate you for what God has used you to do since this year began. A lot of exploit has been done through you. So I want to thank you for the prayers you've been praying for me as well. Like I said, from now to the end of the year, it is thanksgiving, is appreciation, is gratitude. I want to thank you for being a great blessing to my life in different ways for the encouragement, for the word. Some of you write me, and some of the things you write, you have no idea how it inspires me, how it strengthens me. I want to thank you. I want to celebrate you. So please go ahead, celebrating people who have made so much impact in your life, in your workplace, at home, in your church, everywhere. Let's thank God and keep thanking people all through this year. May the Lord bless you and cause his face to shine upon you and make you the testimony of your family, make you the testimony of your, of your generation, the testimony of your city, the testimony of this generation shall come out of you and your descendants to the glory of God's name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen and amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. The grace, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. 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 Wow. Thank you so much. God bless you. See you tomorrow. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Light. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, everyone. God bless you.